All right, what is up, everybody? Eric here from Tea and Tobacco doing a live stream with you today. Uh, sorry, it's just taking forever trying to get all set up. It was just being a huge pain in the butt, and yeah, everything was just, uh, it was all messed up. So I'm trying to get set up here, get my chat going here. Uh, I have all my screens off to this side, so it's kind of uh, in the way, but you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, Colvin, what's up? I'm um, doing pretty good. I'm just trying to get logged into some uh, chat here on my phone so it's a little easier. Uh, hopefully I can get that done. And uh, hopefully <laughs> a few more people. I uh, originally had set up the live stream on my phone, which was a huge pain in the butt um, because when I went so I set up the event on my phone, and then when I went to live stream through my computer, uh, it's like, this event requires you to stream through your phone. It's like, well, that's that's stupid. I may have set it up on my phone, but, you know, it's not like uh, I actually wanted to use it on the phone. Um, so that's how it is. Let's see if I can get into the chat by itself. That would be good. Uh, do I sound all right? I'm using my uh, Yeti here, and um, hopefully I have the settings okay. It sounded all right to me earlier, so hopefully all is good on that front. Let me... Uh, all right. Can I break out the chat on its own? Live chat. Yeah, good enough. All right. So, um, yeah, not a whole lot going on. Uh, I know it's been a little bit since I've actually been uh, making some videos and whatnot. It has been just kind of crazy around here, just dealing with, you know, regular regular old life. Um, but, you know, that's how it is. Uh, I have right now, there's actually a, well, a thunderstorm had just rolled through. Um, I'm hoping it was just a quick one because I don't think it was supposed to rain anymore. And uh, I'm not hearing any thunder at the moment. But if I suddenly disappear, uh, it could be because I lost power because that's what happens in my neck of the woods. And I'm on a road that's a dead end. So if we lose power on our road, we're like one of the last to get picked up because there's only like, you know, 10 more houses after me. And um, I'm already a mile and a half off the main road and there's no side streets or anything. So, so a mile and a half from from the major road um yeah we don't get taken care of too much uh like uh thanksgiving a few years ago we were out for like four days because of snow uh because a tree fell across our road um a couple houses down and they did not get around to it until days later which was a riot so you know that's how it is i guess I'm still trying to figure out if I can break this out on my... I might have to actually check it out on the actual program here, YouTube. Um, yeah, other than that, not a whole lot going on. Um, I am not sure what I want to smoke today. Um, hmm. Let's see what we got going on in here. I think... Hmm. I'm going to smoke something you guys can't have because it got discontinued a few years ago. Um, but they're not bad. Uh, I'm pulling out the uh, Zycar Defiance. Uh, the Zycar Defiance, I'm not sure if they are using the same blend for what is now like the HC, I don't know, Connecticut or whatever. Um, so Zycar did have stuff released under their actual name. Um, so we've got a Zycar Defiance here. Um, yeah, they did have stuff released under their own actual name. Um, and then they started making like the HC, uh, and that was under their name for a while, I believe. And then suddenly they just stopped putting the Zycar name on it. Um, so I guess that's just kind of how it went here. Um, but yeah, this one actually says Zycar right on the band. Um, and I should probably pull up what I'm actually recording here so I can actually see what I'm looking at. All right, so I'm going to get this cut up here. Um, I'm just gonna be drinking some water today um, just cause it is hot and I am actually sweating like crazy already. I'll probably have to open the door. I mean, open the window. I had it closed because uh, 
it was thundering and lightning outside, but I think uh, I think that storm may have passed. So, is anything going on out there with people watching? Um, some people were asking when I was going to do a live stream again, and um, I said, hey, why don't we do one on Saturday night? So, here we are. I'm hopefully going to try to make these a regular thing. Um, you know, try to get them at least on Saturday or Sunday nights. Um, I did put up a poll, and uh, it seems to be kind of hit or miss on who wants what. Um, you know, I, the, really the poll came out to Saturday barely eked out Sunday as the best night, followed by Friday, and then um, some random days during the week were very, very low, so... Uh, do I prefer a pipe or cigar? Um, really, it just depends what I'm doing. Um, for the most part, uh, I don't have an overall preference on either one. Um, yeah, like if I'm sitting at my desk working or something, then a pipe, I'll do a pipe because mostly uh, it's all right if I let it go out. A lot of times if I'm smoking a cigar but I'm working, I'll set it down for too long. And they'll keep going out on me. Uh, but something like this, I think live streams have kind of been hit or miss, which one I'm doing. I think I do cigars most of the time on the live streams that I've done. Um, just because it's easier for me, I don't have to deal with it. Um, but, you know, I don't really have a strong preference either way. Because um, both of them give you a totally different you know, flavor profiles and all that fun stuff that you uh, will get in one, but not the other. Let's see if I can continue working on here, getting logged in. All right, I'm actually on the YouTube website. Tea and toast comes up first, but tea and tobacco comes up second. <laughs> oh, there we are. Uh, where is the chat? Can I break out the chat? Let me see the chat. Oh, really? You're not gonna let me see the chat? All right. Well, I'm gonna have to work on that and probably send myself a message or something. Um, or I'll keep having to look over here. What's up, old Hollywood Briar? Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I'm get. I'm assuming you're still over in California at this uh, particular junction. Uh, thanks for checking in. Yeah, I know it's been a while, um, but, you know, that is life sometimes. You just kind of have to deal with it. Uh, let me break this out over here, and I will send it to myself. Pop out chat. Usually I've pulled my, um, I've pulled my desk over. But it's there's so much crap in the way. I don't want to pull my desk over today, so my desk is way over here, way over to the side, and um, <laughs> trying to trying to get all that. Uh, let's see if I drop that into a message to myself. Let's see if I can somehow get that. And. Um, so I just dropped it into Discord, and hopefully I can pull the thing from Discord, and I'll be good. And it's been such a pain setting this up. I'm sorry, guys, I was totally late. I uh, did not expect to be that late. Um, but, yeah. Whoops. Wrong crawl. Totally posted in the wrong uh, server. So, you know, this is that too. <laughs> Let's try this again. All right. Oh, so I want to open that open in browser. Nope, that is not what I want. Let's try this again. Copy link into here paste go yeah 
it's not looks like it's gonna work on me all right so i will just deal with having to look over to the side for now and um yeah that's just kind of how it goes what's up vcr um i know i chit chat with you on instagram a lot uh so yeah i am over on instagram for people who uh happen to like instagram i don't use it nearly as much as i should i know i should but i just don't um yeah and let's see if i can get logged in over here hmm. hey nope yeah no nope. oh <laughs> all right uh yeah anything else going on for everybody so yeah today i'm smoking my uh zykar defiance uh just drinking some water here um some nice ice water because it is really hot and i'll probably get up and open the window in a minute now that the uh the, the rain has finished up I don't have a ton to talk about. I never really, um, yeah, didn't really plan on anything. How are you liking Discord? As far as using it for chat or anything, like, uh, it's been good. Uh, it's nice to have, you know, a few people just kind of hanging around and chilling and chatting about random stuff a lot of the time. <laughs> Uh, it tends to be a lot of random banter, but you know there there are some regulars in there that post uh, cigar related stuff or tea related stuff on a on a regular basis. Nice having a small little community for my tiny little channel. Very raisiny. Especially on the finish, there's a huge hit of like just a just a the aftertaste of a raisin. It's actually pretty nice. Um, I don't remember when I got these. Uh, probably 2015. I got them on clearance. I got them for a whole whopping like thirty dollars for a box of twenty. Um, so I figured, what the hell, I would pick them up. Uh, any merch ideas yet? Uh, currently, no. I don't really have any merch ideas. If anybody has them, uh, you can pass them along. Let me know. Um, yeah, I've just been busy. Like we were planning on doing a website, but I put that on hold um, just because it's been so busy. And going into uh, September, I'm going to be even more busy with work. So just being able to keep up. Um, making content for the channel is going to be hard enough, let alone dealing with uh, the creation of a website and all that fun stuff. I also have some other projects I want to uh, work on, just not related to uh, this channel. So I got some other other things I want to work on. But um, so I think that's just kind of one of the things, especially <clears throat> just with how the climate is out there. Um, you know, everyone's having problems. I just saw um, stuff and things made a video about whether he's even wanting to stay on YouTube at all. Um, I've been posting some of my stuff over on daily motion, but there's so little traffic, even though there's like nothing for content, uh, as far as like cigars and pipe tobacco goes, it's like almost all me. <laughs> uh, it gets like no views. Like literally I have like 18 videos up and like a whole like 38 views total and half of them are me just because you have to watch the video and you know to custom pull a thumbnail instead of um you can't upload custom thumbnails which is so stupid so like you have to scroll through the video and find out what you want and that still counts as a view sometimes it counts as two so more than half of the views on my channel on on daily motion are me and you know i've had stuff up there for you know over almost two months now and it's only gotten a couple of views here and there so it's uh obviously not a very popular uh program especially for that type for this type of content so yeah it's just uh, figuring out what to do with this content you know i have a patreon set up um i just have a couple couple supporters over there thanks for those who are supporting um so I got a couple Patreon supporters, but still, it doesn't even come close to making up the the, the lost revenue that <clears throat> we've all had for um, demonetization from YouTube. And a lot of people are talking about you know the the money aspect, but it's it's more than just that. It's dealing with as soon as your videos get 
demonetized, YouTube stops suggesting them. Um, you know, I've talked about this before. Um, I, uh, for those who subscri subscribe to Outlaw, he uh, just made a video yesterday or the day before about the same thing. All of his videos are getting demonetized. He's had a lot of his taken down. And he has like, you know, 1.5 million viewers. So, you know, he was making a living, you know, making YouTube videos was his living. And now YouTube has completely cut him off at the legs um, because, you know, he was making uh, dipping tobacco videos a lot. And, uh, you know, all that stuff got demonetized. So, um, you know, he was talking the same thing. <clears throat> That's not even just the money that it's, uh, the videos do horrible because YouTube does not promote anything. Um, you know, I've mentioned this in the past and, um, uh, my how to smoke a pipe video had been monetized for three years up until this wave hit all of us. And, um, it was getting recommended almost 20,000 times a day. The day it got demonetized, it went down to like 5,000 if that and now it's even less so you can see it's here you know going 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 and then just dropping out of the sky so like views have gone down by like 80 percent just because of because they just don't they don't promote the videos anymore and it's like well you know i, I put a ton of time into all this stuff and so do all the creators and it's like yeah i know it's fun but you know i'm giving youtube all this free con you know it's content for free and they're making all the money off of it because i'm sure they're still putting ads um even though they're not paying for for you know paying the creators or anything like that so at this point you know it's it's kind of um kind of discouraging when you know a lot of us have put you know thousands of hours of work into our channels and um then youtube says ah oh, we don't want you here anymore Should take all you guys to YouTube one day. It's an amazing place, and have a helicopter pose in the, uh, have a helicopter posted at the entrance. Uh, yeah. Uh, since considering how tiny we are, and how many of the really big players are getting hit, um, you know, we're not even gonna make a noise. We can't even do left, do much when people with a million plus subscribers are just you know getting killed. It's uh, yeah, it is what it is. And now just with everybody going to Patreon, it kind of sucks because then, you know, I realize people only can only support, you know, so many creators. Um, it just becomes super overwhelming. People only have so much of a budget to, to, to give for this type of stuff on a, on a monthly basis and whatnot. But, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Anything else going on out in YouTube land? Let's see how many people we have watching right now. Um, can't tell at the moment. And I don't know because it's not telling me for some reason. I probably need to go. Oh, I probably need to switch switch screens here. All right. So actually, hey. 10 viewers, that's not bad. I've had less, so that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anything else going on out there with everybody else who's uh, who's watching? Like I said, I didn't really have anything overly prepared. Um, let's see, what else has been going on? Man, I haven't really been taught, you know, uh, you know, I talked to... James Patton once in a while. I haven't talked to him too much this month. <laughs> you know, he does the same thing. He's moved over to uh, to doing his sleep. He, he basically gets you on both ends of the sleep cycle. He uh, does the reviewing of mattresses and blankets and sheets and whatnot, and then it reviews coffee. So he gets you coming and going for your, for your sleepy times. <clears throat> So yeah, I've been contemplating some other projects. Um, 
as I mentioned on my my last uh, live stream, I'm a huge wrestling fan, and you know we have a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in wrestling. This fall is going to be huge, so I was thinking about doing something along those lines, doing a podcast or something like that, um, just for something else to do, and it's uh, easier than making videos, so I can bang those out pretty quickly without a whole lot of thought put behind them and I don't have to set up lights and all that fun stuff so I could that's one of my other projects that's possibly out there um, <clears throat> I am hoping this fall once the weather cools down it's just been so hot in this stupid room um, and I don't want to do them outside of uh, redoing my pipes 101 series and my cigars 101 series I've had a couple people ask some questions let's see if i can uh there's a few topics that i wanted to cover um someone asked just general uh humidification uh, advice you know what i use for humidification in my humidors um so that's a topic that i'm definitely going to cover i'm going to cover you know your how to smoke a pipe uh you know how to smoke a cigar um how to store cigars how to build a cooler door um you know and then just small quick videos if somebody wants a specific like you know how to cut a cigar video i don't they don't need to go through the whole you know 18 15 minute video of how to smoke a cigar they just want to know how to cut one or how to light one i'm going to make those same with uh pipes you know uh, how to smoke a pipe how to pack a pipe uh how to deal with flake tobacco uh, plug tobacco you know the different types of genres uh all that type of stuff storage moisture um other uh lighters and matches and you know rehydrating and all that fun stuff so uh and then same with uh tea i'll probably uh i think i've done pretty decent on the tea ones i'm not sure if i'm gonna redo all of them or not but it's it's on the possible table so um I did put a poll out asking what were the most favorite videos on the channel and overwhelmingly it was how to's and reviews. Um, so I'm definitely going to uh, keep up with that. I have, you know, tons more uh, pipe tobaccos to review. I have so many, it's uh, a little overwhelming at the moment. Uh, same with my cigars. I got a ton of cigars uh, to review. I actually have, I think my wife picked out, a, I think I have a blind in here somewhere. Yeah, so I still have one that my wife picked out uh, during my last round that's still in the tube, so I'll have a, another blind review to do sometime in the near future. Let's see, what's, oh, the uh, Firebird that was in one of my videos has been sold, so that's good. Um, somebody nearby has bought it, and they are looking to restore it for their daughter, so that's cool. Um, looking forward to seeing it when it's done. It was a uh, 83, I believe. <clears throat> Other than that, this has been very hot over in this area. All right, anything else going on? I don't even, anybody's got any questions? Cigars, pipes, you know, all that fun stuff. I have a big old husky laying on the floor right now because we are babysitting her or a dog sitting, whatever you want to call it. Advertisers do not want ads on tobacco-related channels. I guess it's a bad image. It's not even that. It, um, it's actually policy for Google, so it's not specifically the advertisers. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of advertisers who don't care. Um, especially, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of ads that are way more risque than you know the content that we're making. Um, so it's just a Google thing. Uh, there are other ad services that I was looking into for the website build because there are other uh, companies that do serve ads and they don't have the restriction on um, you know tobacco related content and even they will take ads for like cigar shops and all that stuff so um, 
you know, you'll see on <clears throat> any of the, uh, you know, tobacco related blogs or whatever, you'll see an advertisement for like Cigars International or whatever. And you follow that ad serving agency and they are, you know, fine with all that type of stuff. So it's not necessarily the advertisers. It's specifically Google um, because they are the ones who ser- who run AdSense and that is what is run through YouTube. Uh, because of course they own YouTube, so Google owns everything on the supply chain. So they are the ones in charge. So it's not like I can have a alternate ad service on YouTube because they use their own. <laughs> so that's kind of one of the things. And it's the the whole thing with the advertising. First, it start like the major, the first quote unquote apocalypse is. Um, you know, they were putting stuff on videos for, like, white supremacists or, you know, other uh, controversial content. Um, so that's where, like, the first one happened a couple of years ago, um, and everybody kind of got hit. And then um, most recently, <clears throat> the whole, uh, you know, hate speech Vox thing, um, now they're applying their, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, policies disproportionately and not consistently. Um, so, you know, if you're a huge network talking about topic A, but you're small and talking about topic A, one will get monetized, meaning the uh, huge network, and the other guy is not, even though the content is, like, exactly the same. <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, YouTube, Google is pretty much, you know, running the world at this point. Man, you guys are not chatty tonight. Normally the chat's going a little faster than this. Actually, I should probably check Discord. I don't know if anybody's sitting in Discord asking questions. Nope, doesn't look like I <laughs> just figured I'd check. Um, for someone just getting into pipe smoking, any suggestions, mild tobaccos to start with? Uh, yeah, I actually made a video earlier this year about my top five plus a few more uh, tobaccos to try as a new pipe smoker. Um, I can't totally remember them off the top of my head. But uh, a kind of good starter for everybody. It's um, you know light. It's it's a mid lane, mid road aromatic is lane one Q. Um, that tends to be very popular, and it's actually probably one of the highest selling bulks there is out there. Um, also, another one to try is Amphora Original. Um, I find that not too off putting in the uh, aromatic range. Um, and then try, really, it's just kind of a sample everything you can is my main advice. Just kind of buy everything and try it. Um, but those are kind of good two starter ones. And then you can move into, um, you know, the Latakia based stuff, which is actually what I prefer the most. Uh, I started with uh, smoking cigars. many years ago and uh you know it was just getting really expensive and at the time pipes were not getting taxed to hell uh they're still okay comparatively um <clears throat> but i like the latakia blends a lot more um they're you know nice and smoky and they remind me closest to a cigar um so there's lots of blends out there to try um of course the best one's gone now but uh peter stokeby's uh luxury english is good try that you can also try uh cnd uh, makes super balkan super balkan is good uh start with nightcap yes starting with nightcap is probably not a good suggestion also you can't find it right now because it's not back on the market um since peter uh since uh dunhill went out um or irish flake irish flake i would also put at the uh not a good starter tobacco as well. Not that they're both of them are good. Don't get me wrong, um, 
but I'd probably not put eh, that too much on the for beginners list. Um, so you got those um, cask number four from uh, Kamoy's. Uh, is uh, is a straight English. It's pretty good. I mean, sorry, it's a straight uh, Virginia Flake that's not, like, super heavy. Um, and then you can kind of go into more of the Perique Vapors, you know, Virginia Perique blends. Um, this Orlick Golden Slice. Uh, and then you can move into kind of, like, heavier Virginias, like uh, Samuel Galth Full Virginia Flake. Also from Samuel Galth is uh, Cabby's Mixture, which is excellent. Um, but, uh, it's hard to find at the moment. Um, <clears throat> I saw, uh, Gaweth and Hogarth, um, their shipments, their d new distributor for the United States has finally started bringing stuff in. Um, hopefully that also means that the Samuel Gallus supply chain, um, will work its way out. So hopefully soon. As far as the Dunhill stuff, <laughs> builds character. Yes, it does build character, those two. Um, actually, another decent and cheap English is John Bull. Um, I've really only seen it at Pipes and Cigars. Um, you can, I'm sure you can get it elsewhere, um, but that's actually a, a good one, and it's actually really cheap. It's like you can get it for under $4 for an for a ounce and a half or so. Um, I think it's an ounce and a half could be one 1.75 one of the two um but it's relatively cheap and it's uh it's a it's a good starter english as well so those would be what those would be what i say the most um uh peter stokeby's uh, uh not peter stokeby uh eric stokeby the fourth gen i think it's 1895 i don't know i did a review of it so <laughs> check it out um they got so many like yeared ones that I can't remember which one is which, but I did a review and it's, I think it's the only fourth gen I've done so far. Um, it's a, uh, it's kind of a heavier aromatic, but I don't find it overly off putting. Um, I guess I don't find it off putting. Like I do a lot of kind of really heavy sticky ar aromatics. That one, uh, isn't bad. Uh, one thing I do, especially for aromatics, um, I'll pop the tin, and I will kind of like fluff the whole tin up to expose it all to uh, to oxygen and air and whatnot. So it kind of airs off um, any of those um, kind of off gases, everything that kind of built up in the tin. And then I'll put it in a jar for a day before I actually smoke it. Um, I'll do that with actually a lot of stuff, not just aromatics. Um, just I find it if you just kind of expose the whole thing to oxygen for, you know, just expose it to oxygen, let it all air out for, you know, five minutes and then jar it up. Uh, it makes a huge difference. I found that it made a huge difference um, between taking a flake immediately out of the tin versus a day later after um, jarring it for a tin of H.H. H. Latakia flake. <clears throat> Completely changed the uh, flavor profile, and I'm sure this has gone out on me because I've just been sitting here waving around and talking. But something to think about is, you know, those things have been sitting in the tin for, you know, a year or two or three or more, and um, just kind of letting them air out and let all those gases that have built up um, and kind of those notes kind of air out a little bit, get that oxygen in there to kind of brighten up everything <clears throat> and get rid of the uh the nasties that have uh kind of been building up in the tin you're kind of just you know you just got those weird gases that come off definitely changes the flavor uh what else is there um I'm trying to think if there's any more mild tobaccos that i'd say and those kind, those are kind of my kind of my go-to answers, uh, for the most part. Uh, but yeah, I did do a video on it. You can, uh, it's uh, top five pipe tobaccos for either new pipe smokers or beginners or something like that. 
Uh, you can find it, I believe it's in my Pipes 101 playlist as well. Uh, I think I did it in January or February, so you can check that out. Do I sell her any pipe tobacco? Yes, I sell her a lot of pipe tobacco. Um, actually, pretty much anything that I've reviewed has been on my shelf for at least a year. Um, there's a few things that haven't been, like I recently did uh, Bengal, Bengal Slices White. Uh, I reviewed that as, as an <clears throat> when I immediately got it because it had only come out like two days before I received my tin. Um, but for the most part, I do for what I sell her for myself long term, um, basically I'll buy any of the Esotericas that I like uh, whenever I see them. So I have a decent stash of Penzance, uh, Dunbar, uh, and Soda Bed. Margate, Dorchester, um, Tillsbury. I have a pound of Stonehaven put away. Um, so yeah, I definitely do all the esotericas that I really like. I buy them as soon as I can find them because they fly off the shelf so quickly. Other than that, um, I have like 15 tins of Suge Raijin. Um, Suge was made by Drew Estate and Drew Estate came in and out of the pipe tobacco market in like three years. It was uh, like record time in and out. Kind of sucked because the Sugays, especially the God series, were excellent. Um, so as soon as I heard those were being discontinued, I, uh, I bought like 15 tins of that. Because I was just a really big fan of it. Um, I have a decent amount of uh, Lancer Slices big fan of that one um i have a few let me let's see what else we got in here in my uh, kind of my save for later thing um let's see so i have some cnd you know i got bourbon blue kind of ready to you know it's just kind of sitting there it's actually getting a little puffy i might have to break that out um Pirate cake. I'm a huge fan of pirate cake, so I, you know, have a pound sitting on hand. I'm not really worried about them not making this for a while, um, but you know, I got that. And then I have, you know, my the uh, specials that are still, you know, special. You know, I got McCullen uh, British Woods. I got some Blackwood Flake in here. Uh, I have some Frog Morton. You know, those are kind of like um, special occasion. I'll break them out when um, when I'm feeling into it. Uh, what else do I got in here? I got some Dark Star from LaCollin as well. Um, uh, Solani uh, Aged Burley Flake. Uh, pretty much let Burley sit around forever uh, because it ages so damn slow. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's going to be, you know, all the Esoterica stuff. You know, Penzance and, uh, you know, Dorchester and all that fun stuff, so... That's kind of mostly what I'm selling right now. Um, it's just kind of the hard to get stuff. Um, just cause you know, you never know when you can get it. So I, so I pick it up when I can get it. And then I, since I do this channel, I, I don't buy a whole ton specifically to sell her. Um, just because, you know, there's always new blends that I'm picking up. So that's kind of where I'm spending my money for the most part. Um, is picking up new stuff for the channel and not specifically uh, stuff that you know I'll keep around forever. Um, but I will buy uh, tins of uh, Samuel Goweth, um, Lakeland Dark, Cabby's Mixture, and Full Virginia Flake. So I might throw you know like one or two tins on an order, um, and those I'll, I'll store away as well because those are definitely going to age really nicely. Um, you know, Fuller Virginia Flake is wonderful when you're hitting at like, you know, 10, 15 years old. So <clears throat> those type of things, I'll, I'll just throw in a tin every once in a while for me to store. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of how I build my, what I'm actually selling. you know, just buy a tin here and there and just store it. Um, cause I'm probably not going to get around to it just cause I have so many blends to go through. Um. I think my last count somewhere around 170, 180 different blends that I have. And I've only reviewed like 20 some odd of them. So 
uh, I got a ways to go before I get kind of back into my own personal stash that uh, I'm holding for myself. I kind of do the same thing with cigars as well. Um, for stuff that in my humidor there's very little that I buy boxes of um, almost nothing I buy boxes of I buy pretty much samplers of everything <clears throat> and um, yeah so I had just I just buy tons and tons of samplers so if I have you know even more than say four of any one stick it's either that they end up in samplers all the time or, you know, there's been a couple that I've purchased some boxes of, especially for, like, closeout. So uh, this, um, for those who weren't in earlier, I am smoking a Zycar uh, Defiance. Um, and uh, this was released under Zycar's actual Zycar name. Here's the label that actually says Zycar on it before they started making the, uh, the HC series. Um, so I actually got this on closeout. Um so I'll do that sometimes, especially for like any of the, you know, more higher name brands. If there's a closeout for, you know, a box of 20 for $30, then I'll just, I'll just, uh, chance it and go with it. Um, that happened. I also bought a box, actually the same order with these. I bought a box of, um, uh, Gurkha Tridents, which they are, I'm super bummed because they are probably one of the better, actually probably one of the best Gurkhas out there, the, the Trident. Um, it's this nice dark wrapper. It's nice and smooth. It's uh has a nice uh, heavy body to it and it's really creamy and sweet. Um, I, you know, just bought it on closeout and that's kind of where it was. Any thoughts on cheap pipes versus more expensive pipes? Depends on how cheap cheap is. Um, for the most part, uh, if they're made out of high quality briar, um, you can go all over the place. I have some pipes that I've gotten really good deals on. I've gotten some pipes that were brand new but made by you know kind of smaller makers, especially over in Europe. There's a lot of just tiny shops that just kind of churn them out. Um, but they're still really nice quality and you can get them for, you know, $30, um, sometimes. And, um, and then I have a couple pipes that are more expensive. Like I have my, my Winslow, my Winslow was nice. It's around $200, I think. Um, which is actually my favorite pipe. Um, but I think not specifically because of the price or anything. I just happen to like it. Um, you know, I have a Tim West, <clears throat> which is one of my favorites as well. So really, as long as it's quality made, um, you know, some are, some I just think are really overpriced. Um, you know, especially the ones that are, you know, thousand dollars plus. Um, I think that's a little excessive for what it is. I mean, a lot are, you know, P, uh, you know, works of art and I'm not sure if I would want to be smoking out of a $5,000 pipe. <laughs> But I think um, kind of like the, the sweet spot, at least for the more, uh, I guess, mass-produced ones, is going to be around the $80 range, I think. Um, so you have, you know, a lot of Savinelli's, you got the Petersons, some Stanwell's, you know, those brands you can't really go wrong with. Um, Brevia, you know, they all land, they all have some in that range of around $80 or so. I think that's kind of the sweet spot of where I've had the most luck, at least on retail. Um, prices, I, you know, and then I found the Peterson that I own, I actually got for like $8 because uh, I found it in a um, uh, in an antique shop with actually a GBD, uh, GDB and uh, a Kamoy's as well. So, um, for like $28, I bought those three pipes all at once. Um, so yeah, that came out to, you know, what, uh, three, I can't do math in my head right now. What, $9 a piece? <clears throat> Something like that. So, you know, you can, re you can find deals. Um, you know, eBay, there's a lot of, like I was talking about the makers in Europe. Um, there's a lot of makers in Europe that are selling directly on eBay. Um, that, 
make great pipes. Uh, I have an Albin, um, some random pipe maker in you know the Czech Republic or something like that. Um, I think I got it for twenty dollars plus shipping, so it came out to like you know thirty one dollars or something like that. I have a B and B, that's really nice, and there's one other that I forget the name of that I've bought from um, the Czech Republic and whatnot. Uh, and there's also you'll you'll find some you'll find a lot of new makers as well. Uh, that are just you know single people making pipes um and if it's like a, a new maker they're not going to be charging nearly as much and you can get pretty good deals uh, i had a custom pipe made um i'm not sure where it is uh i think it might be in my cabinet over there uh, i had a custom pipe made for you know 70 dollars over in uh czech republic and he so you know he took a custom job and made exactly the one i wanted and that was really cool So, you know, you there's a lot of makers out there, and you can buy direct from the guy who made, you know, handmade it for you. Um, I uh, that's kind of what I've done lately is just kind of find a small maker and buy from them. So C pipes, um, I bought one from him. I've bought a guy named from makes the brand is B R. Uh, he has not posted on Facebook for like three years now, so I don't know if he's making pipes anymore. But like my volcano pipe that I got is awesome. It's one of my favorite pipes, and I got it from him directly. Um, so you know you can you can find out what's up there. What's up, Ryan? Welcome, welcome to the video or welcome to the live stream. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah. So you can you can spend a crap load of money, but I don't think you really need to, especially if, if you want like a workhorse pipe. I mean, you know, somewhere, like I said, in that $80 range and just go for like the Savinelli, Peterson, Stanwell type of, uh, type of crowd, you're not going to have a, you're not really going to have a problem. Claude says my first pipe was a Big Ben for around 50 bucks. Smokes great. Yeah. In Big Ben, that's a, that's another, um, brand to, to check out too. Uh, like all these brands do have some lower end and some higher end. Um, a lot of times the lower end is just going to be uh, a higher end pipe that had flaws so they you know, sandblasted it or, or whatever or made a uh, rusticated finish. Um, that, that happens a lot too. Um, so yeah, I mean there's a, there's a lot out there and there's not, as long as it's good quality briar, as long as you can see it before you buy it, um, you can make a decent judgment on you just want really nice tight grain and or bird's eye and if it's rusticated then you're gonna have a little bit tougher of a time um, personally I like really bulky pipes that are you know big uh, hunks of hunks of wood so like uh, oh man where are all my pipes my pipes are all on my too clean rack so I can't show a ton of you but you know I have like my Stanwell, it's nice and huge, and if you just look, like the the bowl is so much smaller compared to the actual size of the wood. Um, so you know, I think getting something that's nice and beefy um, definitely helps distribute that heat and dissipate that heat better uh, than than like a thin wall Dublin or something like that. <clears throat> um, so if you can find a nice beefy pipe for a reasonable price. Um, that's, a, that's kind of what I go for, but you know, not everybody likes the super beefy price, uh, pipes. I like long stem pipes the best, like, um, church warden type size or just like, you know, a decently long, a decently long stem. <laughs> um, cause some kind of get to the point of, well, is this a church warden or not? Uh, do you smoke cigars? and a pipe all week uh what do you mean by all week <laughs> claude says i usually try to stay in the range of between 80 and 100 dollars for a pipe yeah it's kind of where i sit for the most part <clears throat> you know i splurged on a couple um that stand wall that i just showed you was uh like 140 or whatever and then i have my my winslow uh, that was close to 200, but uh, that was actually a gift from my wife for our 10-year anniversary or something like that. 
No, it was for Valentine's Day one year. But that one was a gift. For the most part, pretty much all my pipes are, uh, you know, other than those two, all under $100. Um, I've even had some really good luck with, uh, on eBay, I got a lot of three pipes. There were two um, pipes, unlimited pipes, and one no-name pipe it just had a hundred stamped on it. Uh, it's a big, beefy one. Actually, I can show you it because it is on my rack right here. But this bad boy, this thing is huge. I mean, just look at the size compared to my hand. Um, it is just stamped with a 100 on the side here. And uh, I got this and two other pipes, two uh, pipes, unlimited pipes. Uh, and I got them for $7 total. And that included shipping. And none of them were smoked. They were brand new virgin wood. It was awesome. So, you know, you can sometimes hit the, uh, the jackpot on eBay. <laughs> Okay, so he's clarified the questions. Do I smoke a pipe or cigars uh, every day? No, uh, I do not. Um, I think kind of my heaviest week might be four times in a week. Usually, um, besides um, making the videos, uh, I might smoke maybe two other times that you don't see <laughs> um so no it's not like i'm sitting here uh smoking up a storm every day it also goes kind of seasonally too uh in the summer uh i definitely find that i smoke way less in the summer uh and then kind of fall and winter are my heavier times and then spring starts to lighten up a little bit going into the summer i don't know it's always been a very seasonal kind of ebb and flow for me um, just cause it's so damn hot that I don't really want to sit outside to do it. And then since I close the door to my office and the AC is not in my office, it gets very hot. So what is it? So right now, according to my thermometer, it is 80 degrees in here and, uh, I'm sweating through my shirt. <laughs> so yeah, it's just kind of a seasonal thing for me for the most part. Um, but no, I'm not. I'm not smoking up a storm all day long. It's a hobby, not a habit. <laughs> Ryan said, I think mine's about seven, uh, 11 inches. Yeah, I put that in the church warden category. Um, I do have a couple of them. Well, they're in the house, but they're not mine. They're my wife's. She likes the church warden, so uh, she has a, a nice... Uh, Meerschaum SMS Church Warden that she really likes, and then our Roma. I believe that Roma is a seconds brand of uh, Savinelli, I want to say. So they're kind of throwaways, or you know, not top of the line. Go to the to the Roma brand. Um, you can kind of tell, especially on the one that we have, the grain is not very tight. Um, so you look at it and it's kind of the it's kind of a wider grain so it's just not just not there i like a bigger pipe feels feels better in the hand yes but yeah so i guess it also depends on how big your hands are but yeah i like a i like a nice honking pipe um so i don't have a that's why i have uh that's why i use plastic or sorry the the you know the rubber bits on all my pipes because they're so heavy you have to chomp down pretty hard on them to uh keep them kind of kind of level and even though i buy pipes that are you know two to three ounces um most of them are kind of like quarter bents or half bends like these so they do stick out a ways so you got a lot of you know um leverage on them so if you uh are a clincher i would say get full bent pipes because when they're hanging down here it's not putting as much you know it's not tipping as much um so but I don't follow that advice because I end up liking kind of the quarter bent, the quarter to half bends a little bit more than full bent pipes. Uh, <laughs> so it just kind of works out for me. Uh, 
Today's hat, uh, it is my Dockers flat cap. I didn't even know Dockers made anything other than pants and shirts. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, it is my Dockers that I kind of wear the most these days. Um, even has gear flaps that I didn't notice until like two years after I had it. I've probably had this hat for, I don't know, eight years now. Uh, it's really nice. Do I have any breathing problems from your smoking? Uh, no, because one, I don't inhale. So that's something most pipe and cigar smokers don't do anyways. Uh, and two, I tend to smoke in a well-ventilated room, except for this moment right now. I hear the peepers outside, so I'm guessing the rain has stopped, so I can probably open my window. And most of the time I smoke outside, even during the winter. All right, yeah, rain has stopped. So yeah, even during the winter, I will, I'll, I'll go sit out on the porch. I like the cold anyways, so you know, I'll, I'll put on a, uh, my winter coat and sit out on the deck and play on my phone and. All that fun stuff. I also have a covered porch too uh, that I've actually done a few reviews on. So even if it's snowing or raining, I can I can sit out there. So not a big deal. But no, uh, since I don't inhale uh, and I'm usually in a well-ventilated room, I'm not really breathing in a whole lot of smoke in general anyways. And also, um, like I said, I'm not I'm not smoking day in and out, you know, just probably, you know, four times a week at the most, and most weeks are probably more like two to three. Sometimes it'll go up. Like I said, in the winter it might ebb and flow a little higher, but anything else going on? Man, I need to add casters to my uh, desk. I actually put uh, like little um, moving pads so my desk was a little easier to slide um, slide in this room, but I do need to put some casters so it makes it a little easier to you know move <laughs> move uh, my desk so I'm not looking way over here on the uh, side to look at. Or really, I should have a laptop in front of me. The last time I did a live stream, I actually used my phone to do the live stream, and I used I stole my my uh, wife's laptop, and that's what I was doing to monitor the chat. Um, but she is using it right now, so I couldn't take it. <laughs> so I just have a monitor turned so I can see. Uh, what's out? What else is going out there? You guys, anybody doing anything fun this weekend? I didn't do anything today, really. So, it's supposed to be super hot tomorrow. I think it's supposed to be like ninety-three tomorrow, something stupid like that. Um, which will be good because uh, we have to bathe our German Shepherd, and it's way easier to do it outside than um, than inside. So it'll be nice and warm, so she'll dry off quickly, hopefully. Yeah, let me check the weather. What the hell? It's pretty bad when your chit chat just goes to weather. <laughs> See about an hour in here. Yeah, it's supposed to be 88 tomorrow, 90 Monday, 88 on Tuesday. So it's going to be uh, a bit hot in the next couple days. So I might do a little hiking, but, you know, just locally, just uh, up the... I, I live only like a mile and a half from um, a huge, a very large state park. So basically I can go straight onto the trails just at the end of my road. So I just walk up my road and go onto the trails out there. Um, there's actually a ton of trails, a ton of old logging roads, and still lots of public um, right-of-ways that have been kind of abandoned. Um, but they're still open to the public for passage. Uh, 
Is that a Dachshund Jedi behind me? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> I forget what my wife bought me this a long time ago. But yes, it is a Dachshund Jedi. Um, we have a, we have a Dachshund. She is 13 years old now. So she got that for me. Um, yeah, quite, um, probably like 10 years ago now. Um, but we did, we had three Dachshunds at one time, uh, at one point. But yes, I got a lot of, uh, wiener rate related material um let's see i don't know what's in my shot right now hold on so yeah you can see right here um there's a dachshund statue i have a dachshund um pepper and salt shaker on top of that um and i have another little tiny dachshund uh painting back here that my wife did a long time ago <laughs> so we have a lot of uh, wiener-related stuff, and um, the wiener jokes don't get old, even though uh, we've had dachshunds for 13 years now. Um, so doesn't get old, and I have a ton of t-shirts that are dachshund-related, too. I probably got like 10 t-shirts that are dachshund-related. Actually, there's one shirt on that you can get on uh, $6 shirts. Uh, that's a dachshund in a hot dog bun with a, uh, a line of mustard on its back. Uh, I have three of those just in different colors plus the sweatshirt. Um, so that tends to be the most worn <laughs> of my t-shirts. I'm not sure if it's because I'm just talking and not smoking very much, or this is a relatively tight pack, so it has lasted quite a while. I mean, we're, what, an hour in here on the stream? So that's not bad. <clears throat> Looks like actually my transfer has been really good tonight, so that's good as well. I wasn't sure if it was going to work because it's been a while since I uh, streamed with this setup, um, but it seems to be working out all right. <clears throat> see what else is going on uh we got rid of one of our chicken coops um that was just made out of pallets but we haven't had chickens for quite a while uh if i ever get chickens again i will build kind of a more mobile coop instead of a huge one that we had it was already here when we moved here uh, i didn't make it when we were here um but I, I would definitely build something that's smaller and mobile and only have maybe like six chickens instead of the 20 chickens that we had um, and unfortunately our German shepherd, uh, likes to kill stuff. So you have to have them very fenced in. You can't let them run around on their own because she will chase and kill them, which, um, was a pain in the butt because we had the chickens first and then the German shepherd decided she liked to eat them. Uh, <laughs> it's not so much that if they didn't run away, she wouldn't do a thing. It's really the chase instinct that's the problem. So if they just like stood their ground and just just kind of walked around and moseyed around casually, the dog wouldn't give a crap. Um, but because they run away from her, then she's like, ooh, this is something for me to chase. Uh, and then she takes them down. So we uh, had a few guinea hens fall victim to her um, because the guinea hens would not stay in the chicken run because they can fly. Oh, you all right? The husky just uh, scared herself by moving uh, a tripod that I had behind. You all right? Yeah? Okay. All right. What else is going on with everybody? Kind of looking forward. What are you doing? Kind of looking forward to the... Uh, to the fall. I, I just do not like the heat. <laughs> Hopefully get some back, maybe some short backpacking trips in. 
I just got a new hammock, um, which is nice, that I might use for uh, doing some backpacking with, doing some hammock camping. Um, depends where I go. Pretty much everywhere around here, I'm always going to have trees, but uh, dang, was that everybody was going to be annoying. But uh, yeah, so northeast, you're always going to have trees. Out west, obviously, you're going to have some problems sometimes. Pipes and Cigars sent me a type of uh, a tin of Bengal slices by mistake, and I love it. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, <laughs> did you get the black label or the white label? Uh, I have a tin of the black label, but I haven't opened it. I've just opened the uh, the white label, and the white label, uh, according to the websites and whatnot, doesn't have the uh, topping, and it has a little more lot to Kia, and I think they actually. They actually dump one of the um, one of the tobaccos as well, so it's a slightly different blend with no um, no topping. Does your wife support you in your smoking hobbies? Yes, she thinks it's sexy and uh, likes the smell of cigars and pipes. So I am all good on that front. And she uh, she has a, a couple pipes as well. She doesn't smoke them very often, but she does have them. She likes like a CAO Cherry Bomb. Is kind of her favorite. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is Bella. I don't know if you guys can see her on the stream. Oh, there she is. This is Bella. This is a nice husky. Uh, our friend uh, had some surgery and she just doesn't want to chase after her the next couple weeks so we are babysitting her and she loves me very much um so it's it can be a curse <laughs> she just kind of sleeps at my feet all day while i'm working um <laughs> today i was actually out in my hammock and she was sleeping under my hammock but like so clo so close to me like her breathing kept moving me because she had like gotten underneath me because i was so low to the ground that uh yeah she was close enough to actually be against me and moving me while she bright while she breathed. I know. It's almost nighttime. It's almost bedtime. She's weird. She uh, likes to sleep under our bed, which is kind of funny. What? No, you've had dinner. Well, you lay down and uh, we can do stuff in like a half hour. How's that? I know. I know. <laughs> well, it's uh, new to the channel. Loving your videos. Keep up the good work. Thanks a lot, Brooke. Or is that Brock? Brock Evans. Um, thanks. Uh, yeah, I've been going at it for quite a while and still people are adding new subs. So thanks for checking it out. Um, yeah. How large of a selection collection do you keep of tobacco and cigars? Life is not complete without dogs. <laughs> no, uh, so we have, um, well, we live on the same property as my mother-in-law. She has a German Shepherd, um, but we kind of share custody of the German Shepherd. And then uh, my wife has a Chihuahua and I have a Dachshund um, that we've had both of them for 13 years. Um, we got them a long time ago, um, not long after uh, we moved in together, so we had them. Uh, and then as far as how large of my collection, my cigar collection is currently at just under 400 cigars um, with about 180 different blends. Uh, and my tobacco collection is somewhere around 30 some odd pounds uh and also around 170 180 blends as well so that's uh my current collection um and it tends to grow faster than i get through it so <laughs> that's just kind of where it is so i'm kind of glad i have the uh the um uh the new air over here to keep my collection cool when it gets hot as hell in my office because it is now up to 80 almost 82 degrees but it is a nice 
uh, 68 degrees in my uh, my uh, my new air, and it holds it holds all my cigars um, except for a few of my personal um, my hand rolls. Uh, I roll my own cigars as well, and I have quite a lot of those left. But I'm gonna have to order some more tobacco soon and roll some more because I think I'm down to about 50. I had 200 of them at one time, so I definitely need to uh, increase my own personal stock because they tend to be my favorite. My son's dog likes to kill chickens too. Yeah, a lot of dogs do. Um, it wasn't a problem because we had the chickens first before my mother-in-law got the German Shepherd. So we have the Chihuahua and the Dachshund, and um, the Chihuahua is only four pounds, so all the chickens pretty much outweighed him, and the Dachshund is relatively slow, so that's not a big deal. So basically, the Chihuahua and the chickens came to an understanding um, with each other, and they just left each other alone, and the Dachshund was too slow to do anything, so she, she left the chickens alone too. But the German Shepherd, not so much. We had, uh, yeah, we had, at one point we had like 13 guinea hens, which are great because they eat all the bugs around and all the ticks and whatnot. But unfortunately, the dog would just kill them and they wouldn't stay in the run because they can fly. Um, and they're so stupid, especially in the wintertime. Like I tried to shoo them into the coop at night and especially like a couple of the nights that we had them, I knew it was get, gonna get down to like negative 20. And the idiots were all just perched up on the top of the run. And I'm like, you guys, you guys are gonna wanna go inside because you are gonna be guinea-sickles when I wake up in the morning. And you know, we lost a couple to the cold because they're so stubborn. They would either be up in the tree or they'd perch themselves on top of something I couldn't get to. Um, but if they perched themselves on top of the run, I would go out and I'd have to pick one up. I mean, they're basically dead when they fall asleep. So so I just picked one up, put it in the coop, pick one up, put it in the coop. And after like three of them get put in the coop, the other ones are like, oh, we should probably go there. And then they go into the coop. But we did lose a few to the cold because they were too stupid to go inside. Uh, and I wasn't going to leave the door open for them all night and let the chickens freeze too, so. Yeah, they were kind of dum dums. So yeah, the uh, Bengal slice is black. Yeah, I haven't I haven't actually had it. I have a tin of it, um, but I just haven't opened it yet. I've actually had it for like three years now, so uh, it's it's well aged at least. So when I get around to it, but I did do the the Bengal slices white, and I really I really like the Bengal slices white. Um, definitely definitely the type of blend that I'm into. I mean, as far as blends that are so bad, I would never smoke them again. <laughs> I've only had two so far that were so bad, I would not, I wouldn't even like touch them, uh, is Captain Black Original, which is horrid. It's probably one of the, it's definitely one of the two worst tobaccos I've ever had. And the other one was Virginia Gold Vanilla. That was horrendous as well. I'm not even gonna touch them. So unfortunately, I'm never gonna review either of them because they're so bad, I don't want to smoke them again to make notes to make a review for them. <laughs> so so uh, those two will have to uh, stay off my channel because I'm not gonna subject myself to it. I'll do a lot for you guys, but those two, I just don't think I can do it again. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Has there any, been it? I don't think there's any cigars that have been so bad that I wouldn't touch them again. Um. Oh, actually, there's one. Uh is made by Drew Estate. It's when they started making some cigars that weren't infused with anything. 
Uh, I believe they are called Isla de Sol. Um, but I don't remember which one because I think they have three different ones. I think they have Habano, Corojo, and Connecticut, I want to say, or at least at the time. And I'm pretty sure it was the Hab- mm. it's either the Habano or the Corojo, but one of them. They were ho- it was so bad, I don't know if I want to try them again. I mean, I guess I could take a puff off one and see if I liked it, but... Uh, yeah, as far as cigars go, there hasn't been one that has been so bad that I wouldn't touch it again. Um, but definitely a couple of pipe tobaccos that I meh, definitely don't want to touch again. Let's see, you guys got anything else for me? If not, I'll probably wrap this up soon. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, 9.30. Let me, if you guys if you guys like Saturday nights, let me know. I'll try to do, you know, kind of start scheduling. This is a little bit of a more often type of thing. Um, you know, try to get some sort of cadence in here. Um, maybe you can get larger crowds if it's a, if it's a bit more consistent. Um, you know, Sunday night Sunday nights are probably easiest for me. But if Saturday nights is the best for everybody, for everybody else, then I will uh, try to work on it and like maybe I'll just do. Maybe I'll tentatively, tentatively say Saturday, but if I can't do the Saturday, I'll do the Sunday. You know, something like that. Um, unless I'm on vacation or something like that. But I don't have any any vacations coming up that uh, I wouldn't be here. I'm not going away for any vacations, so there's that. Um, yeah, I don't even have it. I don't think I even have any time off that I'm taking until like October or something. Oh, I'm taking one day off in September because I'm adding to my tattoo but other than that but i do need to put in for my vacation because i got a lot of vacation coming up all my friends think i'm crazy with all my pipe tobaccos why because because you have a lot of it or (laughs) what Saturday nights are good for me, but Sundays are good too. Yeah. But, uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, I did put out a poll um, a while back, um, maybe about a month ago on the YouTube channel, and Saturday night definitely came in first, but it barely eked out Sunday. So Saturday, Sunday seem to be the highest. Um, you know, it's not like I'm going to do them super late, and you know, most people are out doing stuff on Saturday nights and usually aren't doing stuff on Sunday nights though we do have football season coming up so I don't know how much how many people are going to be watching football on Sundays but I won't be watching football because I'm not a huge football fan so I guess it really depends um yeah I don't know we'll figure something out Hmm, what's been going on? Yep, not a whole lot. Uh, like I said at the beginning, one of my other projects that I'm thinking about taking on is, um, you know, I'm a huge wrestling fan and whatnot, and there's a lot of new stuff coming up this year. Um, so I'm thinking about uh, jumping into the podcast uh, podcast world on that topic. Um, we have the super, we have the J cup coming up from new Japan on the 22nd. So I might start right before that. Um, for those who happen to be fans of wrestling, I know one of my viewers is, um, post a lot in the uh, discord for those who aren't in the discord, check it out. Um, it's pretty much in the description of all my videos. Oh, I should probably th- I'll, I'll throw it into the bottom of this one. But this is a few people hang out in there all the time. Um, I'm in there pretty much. It's linked to my phone too, so um, you know that's always on. Also, if you uh, like the channel, want to support it, use also the Patreon. I got a bunch of different uh, reward tiers right now. I just have a couple of Patreon subscribers, um, so nothing's happening on those. But there are different reward tiers, and if you happen to live in new england or anywhere near me um then 
we can do some like meetups and stuff like that if uh people are interested but the closest person i know to me is like in pennsylvania i'm sure there's probably people who are closer to me but um as far as active people i think pennsylvania is the closest to me at the moment vladimir is coming in a little late here <laughs> you'll have to rewatch. um just about to wrap this up soon uh if you have any questions throw them in now um and uh we can get those out of the way and then we can all mosey off and enjoy the rest of our weekend um i don't know like i haven't made a review in a little while but i definitely have to um i definitely have to so let's see what's the weather i already looked at the weather so it's hot 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 so i will tr yeah i think my best chance of filming is probably wednesday Ooh, yeah wednesday so i'll probably make a review on wednesday i don't know what it will be because i think it will be a blind review but you know Sean says, I have a less than a pound, but before I started, I would have said that looked like a lot more. <laughs> Takes up a decent amount of space. Uh, it's cool uh, cool to hear. Oh, cool. Uh, you spelled here differently, so I wasn't sure. Uh, <laughs> cool to hear about your collection. Mine's still small for pipes and cigars. Yeah, it, you know, it will... Uh, <laughs> It definitely grows, and it can grow quickly out of hand. Um, yeah, I'm 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 running out of storage space in my office. Uh, it's gonna have to start going into some totes and move down to the basement. The good thing about pipe tobacco, though, is you can you can store it in a lot of different places. Um, cigars are obviously a little uh, trickier, which is why I have the uh, the New Air 300, um, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, and if anybody wants, a, there's a there's a promo code out there to get 20% off of it as well if you're interested. Um, let me know. Uh, I don't remember what the code is offhand, but it's on the review of it um, to get 20% off the 300H if you're interested. Uh, I'm not getting a kickback on that, just... Just so you know, it's uh, just 20% off code for, for you guys, for my viewers. Um, but yes, the, the collections will grow out of control. Uh, my tea collection has gone out of control as well. <laughs> um, I know like a lot of my viewers are definitely more on the, the t uh, pipes and cigars, but um, I definitely have to get back to the tea. But it's, like, it's been so hot, I don't really want, want to drink hot tea but i had the uh unan sourcing uh premium subscription box for about five months so i am inundated with a lot of different tea um so we'll definitely be having a lot of tea reviews once uh september rolls around and uh the weather starts cooling off a little bit i have wow i have like 30, 40 different teas from Unan Sourcing to look through. Um, I have a decent amount of Dansong Oolongs. I got a couple of those. I got a few of those. I got some, I got, yeah, I think I got maybe eight different pours from them. But I also bought some pour from them specifically. I got some of their uh, Blue Label Cakes, which are excellent for those who like ripe pour. Um I got their 2017, 16, their blue label. I forget what it's actually called, the Inspiration Series, something like that. Uh, that is an excellent ripe, and um, I think a 357 cake is somewhere around 40 bucks. So those who are interested, uh, it's an excellent ripe pour if you like ripes. That tends to be like my morning teas are usually black, uh, rock oolongs, and, and ripe pours. Uh, and then kind of my evening teas tend to be 
uh, whites and uh, raw pours. Just kind of how it works out. I like kind of the more bold. All right, so uh, thanks for uh, sticking around with me. Doesn't seem like there's uh, any more questions this evening. Uh, for those who came in late, uh, be sure to check out the stream once it uh, has rendered and posted as a video. Uh, like I said, if you'd like to support the channel, I am on Patreon. There's a bunch of different reward tiers on there. You can check them out. Um, and uh, yeah, be sure to always uh, like all my videos when you watch them. It helps what little it can help in the algorithm these days, unfortunately. And um, I'll see you next time on Tea and Tobacco's live stream. See you later, guys. Actually, let me find the freaking button. <laughs>